C-SPAN's local content vehicles are traveling the country as we look at some of the most closely contested House races leading up to this November's midterm elections. How you doing? Bless you, sir. Teddy Ray's my name. Chad Friends of Gene and Joe. Oh, Stoke are you? Good. I met you a couple Good. times. Mama, two, and papa. Thank I you, love man. them. Thank, Thank you. you. I need your help on well, November 2nd. It. Thank you. I appreciate you. When you get there, do what you know to do, son. I will. I will. Well, I'm going to listen to you. And I'm going to come back and keep talking to you is what I'll do. You could, you could look at that a couple of ways. Sometimes no is a good thing. You're right. You know, no on increased spending, no on, on growing government, no on stimulus and, and so on. But the other thing is the party of no, K-N-O-W. Know what's in the bill That's before right. you vote Absolutely. on it. The first district of Arkansas is a very diverse district. We have 26 counties, and it is made up of the Delta on the eastern part of the district and the Ozarks on the western part of the district. And it's, it's a, a very uh, stark contrast in geography, culturally uh, similar contrast. Um, socioeconomic status. This is one of the poorest districts in the United States. Uh, the folks here are good, hard-working Arkansans. Uh, they work for a living. They balance their budgets. Uh, they provide a, a good living for their families and just hard-working people. Uh, good, good people. Voters in the first congressional district typically uh, vote very conservative at the national level, but they will elect uh, Democrats pretty solidly minus a few pockets at the local level. Uh, that has been pretty historical. There has not been a, a Republican elected to the first congressional district since Reconstruction. The two primary candidates in the first congressional district in Arkansas are Republican Rick Crawford, who is a radio broadcaster uh, with a, a, a bit of a media empire that crosses the agricultural span of the district. And Chad Causey uh, is the Democrat in the race. He is the retiring Congressman Marion Barry's former chief of staff. And so uh, you've got the quintessential guy that understands Washington, D.C. and how it works and definitely understands what's going on back in the district versus a first-time Republican candidate in Rick Crawford um, who definitely understands the bread and butter issues of the district, which are primarily agriculture. I think that if you asked for some up and down votes on the big issues that have been dominating um, the American political agenda this last year, health care, the stimulus, uh, cap and trade, card check, some of those issues, I think you will find them in total agreement on those issues. How much of that is how they truly feel about the issues is debatable, but I think that is definitely the message that they're sending to voters. Now, this race is about uh, the people of Arkansas. It's not about me, it's not about my opponent, it's not about the national parties. It's about uh, the, the values that the people here in Arkansas have and what they want to see and the person that's going to fight for them, regardless of party. It's about uh, sending someone to Washington that shares their common sense, conservative Arkansas values. And I do. I share those values. Where I do see differences between the two candidates is Chad Causey has definitely got a more experienced and deeper working knowledge of some of the big projects that are going on in the district. What's a higher education issue that they've been working on for years? What's a water, you know, an agriculture water project that they've been working on? Whereas I think Rick Crawford has just much more of a, a broader populist appeal of, I'm gonna go up there, I'm gonna oppose some of these big agenda items that you're telling me are opposite to the wishes of, of the voters in the district. And I, I think you'd see him being a, um, that type of member of Congress. I think what folks are looking for now is a genuine uh, you know, a citizen legislator that reflects the values of the district that's been here, that has made a contribution here, and is not entrenched in Washington, that's not a, a bureaucrat, that's not uh, one of the uh, political elite. Uh, I'm not doing this to try and get a job, I already have a job, and I want to keep that. And I want to make sure everybody in this district has the opportunities that I've had. I think the first congressional district is the one that everybody is going to feel like a coin toss may actually help you figure, maybe your best way of guessing who's going to win that election. And so as voters decide, who do I like in that race? As their television and radio ads run, you're not going to hear either one of them identify themselves by party affiliation. It'll be their name ID, Chad Causey, Rick Crawford. And I, I wouldn't be surprised to see a 50.1 a to 49.9 final in this uh, 
in this tally. It could literally be that close. C-SPAN's local content vehicles are traveling the country as we look at some of the most closely contested house races leading up to this November's midterm elections. For more information on what the local content vehicles are up to this election season, visit our website, cspan.org slash lcv.